Stay informed on earnings trends and analysis in Zach's Earnings Outlook. Well, another earnings season. This one for the third quarter has officially kicked off now. So it's a good time to check in with our research director, Shraz Mian, who follows all of the nuances of these sure. earnings seasons to see what your impressions are here for the weeks ahead. Overall, bottom line, you are looking at the sixth consecutive quarter of declines? Uh, that's right, yes. The, as, uh, as, as things stand right now, the expectation is for earnings for the index, for the S&P 500, to mm. decline by about 3% okay. from the same period last year. Uh, and if we do get a 3% decline or any negative uh, growth uh, for the index in Q3, then it will be the sixth quarter in a row, uh, as you mentioned, uh, of, of earnings declines. But what about the prospect that's out there that uh, Q3 is going to mark the end of the earnings recession? And starting with Q4, we'll begin to see a little bit of an upturn. Yes, yeah, so that's the expectation right now. The expectation is that uh, Q3... Uh, uh, will have negative earnings growth. In fact, there is a scenario uh, where we could envision even Q3 turning positive ever so slightly. But the consensus estimates, the bottom up consensus estimates for Q4 uh, 16 uh, at present are showing positive earnings growth for the index. And I have a, uh, I have a, a slide that shows this and this in the, uh, uh, in the highlighted uh, for Q3, the minus 3% decline, mm -hmm. uh, that's the third quarter of 2016, and then 5.4% positive earnings growth in Q4. Uh, so if we do see this scenario play out, uh, then Q3 uh, will be the, uh, the, the last negative uh, on, the, on the growth front, and we uh, will resume positive growth. The, the modest or the ever so slight chance of a positive growth in Q3 uh, depends on, uh, as, as, as folks know, that typically two-thirds of the companies, any earning cycle, uh, come out with positive surprises. So in the aggregate, relative to preseason expectations, uh, there is a two to three percentage point positive growth relative to preseason uh, pre expectations. So if we get a three percent aggregate medium surprise for the S&P 500, and they're expected to decline by 3%, then we could get to the flat line by the time everything is said and done. So we may actually even see uh, uh, a somewhat of a positive uh, growth number for Q3 as well. All right, but Q4, that 5.4% that you highlighted, that's a respectable turnaround from what we've been seeing in the past five, six quarters. So what's going to bring that turnaround? So th there's a number of moving parts to that, the biggest one being energy. Uh, and energy, as we all know, has been a drag for a very long time. In fact, has been one of the biggest contributors to what we call as the earnings recession. And Q4-16 is the first quarter in six to seven quarters when the, uh, the comparisons for that sector turn positive. So we have positive earnings growth uh, from the energy sector for the first time in more than a year, uh, and that's really uh, giving uh, the, the index as a whole a bump. Uh, Q4 uh, is, is relatively a seasonally stronger period, too. Finance is expected to do better. There are uh, a few other sectors that are expected to contribute to the positive growth, too. But all said and done, it's, uh, it's an energy story uh, when we are talking about uh, Q4 and beyond. But is it just an improvement in the top-line revenues, or is it an improvement in other components as well? You know, the, 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 uh, the, the corporate America has been extremely good uh, and uh, uh, has, uh, ha has been able to, to eke out a little bit of a top line gain, uh, but their ability to squeeze that little bit of revenue gain into more earnings and bottom line has been quite impressive. So many of us suspected that margins uh, that had been as high as they have been over the past few years, uh, they have nowhere to go uh, but to the historical mean, which would be a decline for margins. Uh, corporate America has, uh, uh, has, has, has run counter, their performance has run counter to that. Margins have remained elevated. Uh, so for the most part, 
uh, it's, it's the corporate management team's ability to keep costs under control and have just a little bit of top line gain uh, to give us, uh, give us the, uh, the type of growth that we are looking for in Q4. Okay, let's get back to Q3 and put that in a little bit more context sure. for the viewers. Already, we've had two or three large industrial companies that have lowered their earnings and revenue estimates for the full year. Does That's that right. concern you? It does, and it, 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 it runs counter to what uh, what the street is looking for in uh, in Q4. Uh, recall, uh, we were discussing the positive growth expected uh, in Q4, and if this trend, you're talking about Honeywell, you're talking about Walmart, you're talking about some of the other folks mm -hmm. uh, that have uh, been kind of uh, downplaying uh, the expectations for, uh, for, for Q4 and beyond, if this continues, uh, as these companies report Q3 results and offer guidance uh, for Q4, uh, then that growth expectation for Q4 remains at risk. Uh, typically, in any earnings uh, reporting cycle, uh, we see uh, expectations for the following reporting cycle come down. Companies typically guide lower. Uh, Part of it is a reflection of ground realities because business isn't as good. Part of it is good expectations management on the part of uh, uh, CEOs and other corporate leaders. Uh, they, they like to see uh, and be seen beating estimates than just matching estimates. Mm -hmm. So they lower expectations so that they could easily beat them. So if, if this trend continues of, uh, of, of negative guidance and accelerates, uh, then we'll have the estimates for Q4 drop more than what we saw in Q3 ahead of the start of the Q3 earnings season, which will be a big negative. But at this point, and it's still relatively early, I mean very early in the reporting cycle, have you seen more or less negative guidance so far? Less. And this is a continuation of what we saw three months ago uh, when companies were reporting Q2 results and they were guiding for Q3. Uh, we saw a deceleration in the tone and pace of, uh, of, uh, of negative revisions for Q3, uh, primarily driven by what management teams were sharing with us uh, about their business outlook. So the, the, the relatively neutral to relatively favorable tone that kind of took hold in the market about earnings expectations was partly driven by this, uh, this, this less uh, less negative tone of management guidance. We want to see continuation of that this earnings season, and as a result, we don't want to see as much negative revision to Q4 estimates as was the case prior to Q3. Also of note for the Q3 season, this is the last time Alcoa is going to file an earnings report as a single company. That's right. Right? November That's right. 1, they're expected to split into two companies. That's right. And so you've been writing for a while, a lot of other of our strategists have been writing for a while, that Alcoa no longer really reflects the economy here in the United States. They're not the barometer that they once were. Does this split just underscore that for you? Absolutely. Alcoa was for a long time part of the Dow Jones industrial average of the, of the 30 stocks. They were, they were taken out of it. I was about to say kicked out, but uh, <laughs> they're still an S&P 500 company. Uh, uh, the U.S. has not been an industrial manufacturing centric economy for a long time, and uh, uh, it's 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 services. It's 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 a lot of other areas uh, that 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 are better proxies. Uh, in the within the within the corporate world about the health of uh, of even the industrial space uh, than what Alcoa represents. Granted, uh, the combined company as it stands um, uh, does have some relevance to parts of the economy like aerospace, uh, commercial aviation, particularly some of the automobiles, uh, and uh, in other areas have been using aluminum more and more in recent years, uh, but it, it, it has no relevance uh, to, the, uh, to, to, to the broader economy and, and to the broader corporate world as well. I've, I've always been very skeptical of those notions uh, that as goes Alcoa, so does the rest of the S&P 500. I think that's 
just doesn't make any sense. Bunch of hoo-ha. Uh, absolutely. And, and now we'll have to see, uh, you know, they've long kicked off every earnings season, right, in people's minds. That's right. Even though we know the earnings reports S start. don't stop. That's right. Right? So now are, will both of their companies be the kickoff companies to report? Who knows? We will see. <laughs> we will see. That's right. Quickly run down the uh, drags and the sectors that are going to help out this Okay, so let season. me have... Let me have this busy-looking table uh, for folks, um, and this is what it's. What we are showing here is the summary picture for Q3, okay. where we have all 16 ZAX sectors, the estimates for Q3 compared to the actual results for Q2, mm -hmm. and we have earnings and revenue and margins. Uh, so the, the, the major drags, as we were discussing uh, briefly earlier, energy remains the biggest drag, 68% decline in, uh, uh, in that sector's earnings. Uh, the two others are transportation, uh, even though the airlines are by and large doing pretty good. Uh, and uh, autos, 18.5% uh, decline uh, in autos. Autos are doing much better too, but it's all a function of what's happening with Ford Motor Company mm -hmm. and the, uh, the, the transportation. Uh, it, it, it's effectively uh, within the air carrier space. They have strong revenue gains still, uh, but it's not really going down to the bottom line as much as a number of these uh, carriers are, 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 are redoing uh, their labor contracts. American did recently, United Continental did uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so these three are the biggest uh, uh, drags, and, uh, uh, but as we could see in there, there's not much uh, on the positive side to, uh, to, to offset that. In fact, on an X energy basis, earnings for the index uh, would be uh, would be barely in positive territory. But dig into energy a little deeper for me. Sure. Yeah. So the energy uh, post, particularly the OPEC announcement, and then uh, yesterday uh, there was uh, apparently some uh, some words of support from uh, Putin too. So the U.S. benchmark as well as the global benchmark is firmly about 50, even though they are down a little bit today. And that has given a lot of momentum uh, to, uh, to, the, uh, to, to oil prices as well as the, uh, the, the energy company stocks. I have a chart which shows the earnings picture for the energy sector within the S&P 500. And the, uh, uh, the, the orange color one, that's Q3 uh, 16, and these are estimates. So this is the total earnings expected from the sector is about $4.1 billion, uh, and that would compare to $13 billion in Q3 15. And as we were talking earlier about the comparisons turning positive for the sector, we see that in 4Q16, the sector is expected to earn a little over $6 billion, which would compare to $4.7 billion in 4Q15. So the comparisons turn positive, and this chart shows, this chart runs through expectations for 3Q17. And uh, if the uh, oil price outlook that the market is pricing in right now, if this remains in place, then energy, instead of being a drag, will be uh, a, a net positive contributor to the uh, index earnings once again. All right, we're going to check in with you again uh, during the earnings reporting sure. season. In the meantime, don't forget that if you go to our website, zax.com, you can always see all of the little nuances from the reporting season, changes day to day, etc., reflected in Shiraz's written commentary, earnings outlook, and you can link to that right off the homepage. With Shiraz, I'm Terry Ruffalo.